Next, let's talk about what are the different types of neurodiversity. So the most common type of neurodivergence in, our, in the US population is dyslexia. About 20% of the population has dyslexia. The next most common is ADD, ADHD. That's about 10% of the population. Dyspraxia makes up about 4% of the population. A little over 2% of the population is autistic, including myself. And then about 1% are all the other types, including, for example, Tourette syndrome. Now added together, this means that roughly a third of the US population is neurodivergent. I think, I strongly suspect not just the US population, but human populations in general, probably about a third of them are in one, some shape or form neurodivergent. Now, autism is a lifelong developmental disability. It typically first starts to become apparent in early childhood and it can impact a person's social and communication skills, relationships, self-regulation. It is a spectrum condition. There's a famous saying in, in the autism world, if you know one person with autism, you know one person with autism. And that kind of speaks to the fact that it's such a multivariable spectrum that you could have two people that are actually quite similar to each other and yet their, autis are, their autistic symptoms might vary quite a bit. But some of the more common ones that, that might uh, need accommodations within the workplace are like sensitivity to sensory stimuli such as noise, lights, movements, these can make environments very distracting and, and hinder work and hinder concentration while at work. Uh, ADHD or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, there's actually a lot of overlap between this and autism, which is to say there's a lot of people who are both autistic and have ADHD. ADHD is a disorder defined by an ongoing pattern of inattention and or hyperactivity impulsivity that can interfere with functioning or development. Now, an individual with ADHD might have either of these or both of these. The important thing to keep in mind is that someone with ADHD that who is in the moment struggling with trying to focus their attention, they're not struggling because they're lazy or they don't care or they're not paying enough attention. Is, some people with ADHD could try very, very, very hard to stay on task and focus and sometimes still have difficulty with that. Dyslexia is one of my favorite examples of neurodivergence because it's so common. A lot of people meet, have probably at some point in their life met someone with dyslexia. Um, most people think about dyslexia in terms of this is someone who has a, a reading deficiency or struggles with like reading or maybe writing. And although that's true, if that's the only thing you think about with dyslexic individuals, you've kind of done those folks a, a, a disfavor. Look, all human beings have strengths and weaknesses, including you. Imagine if you lived in a world where people only judged you on your weaknesses and discounted your strengths. If the only thing you think about with a dyslexic individual is they struggle with reading, you've kind of done them the same disfavor that, that I just gave with my hypothetical. Many of the smartest people I've ever met are extremely dyslexic. I know a lot of scientists, biologists, engineers, just like brilliantly gifted problem solvers who struggle to read. And, and yeah, it's true, it might take them 10 times as long to read a page as it would me. They're also like brilliant problem solvers. And that's all of these neurodivergences, they have struggles, but more and more we're starting to realize they also have a lot of cognitive strengths um, that seems to be tied into their difference. A Tourette syndrome isn't just like shouting out randomly like vulga vulgarities or profanities. People with Tourette syndrome they can have repetitive involuntary movements or vocalizations called tics. Dyspraxia is, is a development coordination disorder. It can impact an individual's ability to plan and process motor tasks. Um, a person with dyspraxia might find it difficult to plan what to do and how to do it. Dyscalculia, I've heard a lot of people say, I'm not a math person. In most instances, they're wrong. It just means that they just haven't learned all the steps to be able to perform a particular mathematical function. But someone with dyscalculia really isn't a math person. And some people make the mistake of assuming that somebody who struggles with like basic arithmetic and stuff like that might not be suited for a more technical job. Don't be so quick to make that assumption. Temple Grandin can't do algebra. And yet she has a PhD in animal husbandry. And if you've eaten beef, chances are good that that beef went through one of the processing plants that she designed. She's able to think three-dimensionally. 